The next topic in electrochemical cell, we're going to look at um, dissecting those half cells a little bit more. And we're going to talk about, um, if we go back to that, that diagram that we had where we were looking at the structure of the cell and we talked about what is the driving force for this reaction. At the very end of that video, I mentioned that there was this thing called a standard reduction potential. And what that tells us is how much a half cell wants an electron. So um, standard reduction potentials are, re are potentials for the half cells, right? So when we talk about a standard reduction potential, we're not talking about the whole cell. We're just talking about a half cell. And we're talking about, relatively speaking, how much do all of the different possible half cells want an electron? So what we're going to do is, um, for this, we basically, we arbitrarily sub uh, select and tabulate the half cell reactions by their reduction potentials. So these are, these are given as reduction potentials. So these are going to be tabulated as reductions. Um, and so, and then what we do is we, uh, we tabulate all the half cells um, in terms of basically, quote unquote, how much they want to be reduced. So we say think so. Um, uh, sp uh, so potentials that are um, very positive. So uh, standard uh, standard reduction potentials um, that are positive. So positive reduction potentials denote that uh, reduction is favorable. And then obviously negative reduction potentials denote that reduction is less favorable. So we have to have an arbitrary zero. Um, and the arbitrary zero, so the, the quote unquote arbitrary zero point is the standard hydrogen electrode. So this is um, 2H plus plus two electrons gives H2 gas. So uh, this particular, um, this particular uh, cell, half cell, two uh, H plus plus two electrons gives H2. You notice that this is written as a reduction. So that, that fits with our tabulating as um, a reduction. We basically said this one is gonna get an E naught equal to zero volts. Um, and that is that just basically sets some relative position. So positive and minus don't really make a difference. It's just that we we chose the zero point to be this arbitrary cell. Now the reason why we cho chose the standard hydrogen electrode is because it turns out that it's pretty much in the middle of a lot of different reactions, right? So you don't want to choose something that's going to be on one end or the other because then you'd all get all positive or all negative numbers. So what we did was we chose, not we, what they did, um, was they chose a cell that was kind of in the middle of all the common electrochemical cells, half cells, and they said, well, we'll make this zero, and then ones that are kind of positive, those will be the ones that tend to be reduced, and then the ones that are negative will be the ones that are t tend to be oxidized. So that's why they selected that. Now we gotta talk about what these, how these are measured. So the first thing is standard. So we have to talk about what it means to be standard. So the, the E, which is the standard cell potential, the symbol for it, is, um, is E naught. And we get the naught because it's a standard. So these have to be at one molar solutions that are aqueous. Uh, the partial pressure of a gas, so the pressure has to equal one atmosphere. And that's the partial pressure of the gas. So for example, like hydrogen gas um, would have to be at one atmosphere for this to be a standard reduction potential. And then they also have to be in degrees Celsius. At, at 20, uh, this has to be at 25 degrees Celsius. So that defines the set of standard conditions. So when we measure these uh, standard redu reduction potentials, those are the conditions at which they're measured. And then the unit that it gets is volts. And volts is a measure of electrical potential energy. So when you think about a volt, right, or when you think about gravity, um, when you move a rock 
up a hill. Basically, you're moving the rock up a field, and that field is, gra is gravity. So um, things want to tend to be closer to the Earth than further away because gravity pulls things toward the Earth. So as you push the rock up the hill, you're moving that in the gravitational field to higher energy. Well, uh, it's the same thing with um, the units of volts. So volts is a measure of electrical field. And you can imagine that electrons want to be near things that are positive. So if you create a, uh, if you have like a positive and a negative plate, and you move an electron around in there, the electron's going to want to go toward the positive plate. So pushing an electron up a hill would be pushing an electron away from the positive plate and closer to the negative plate. And this kind of makes sense because the fact that we have an electrical field measurement is, is important because what we're basically saying is how much do these things want an electron? So if these things are very, very positive, then that means that they really do want an electron. So a positive voltage indicates that it wants an electron. And the it in this case is the half cell. Um, meaning if you, if you have a nice big positive number, the electrons are gonna wanna be drawn toward it. So that means that reductions are gonna wanna take place. So the fact that positive numbers um, denote that reduction is favorable is because of this, this unit of voltage and um, that is a measurement of the electrical field or how much it wants to drag the electron toward it. So the next thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at a chart that shows um, all of the half cell potentials from the textbook. So if you look at this chart, at the very, very top, we have things that are negative. And at the very, very bottom, we have things that are positive. So like I said, um, and at the, in, at the zero point is our standard hydrogen electrode. So we have two H plus plus two electrons goes to H2, and that's our zero. So as we go down toward positive numbers, um, we're going to increase the favorability of reduction. So in essence, when you hook this cell up, as, as these cells become more and more positive, when you hook these cells up that are down here at the bottom to a cell that's up here at the top, that, that cell is going to want to draw electrons toward it. These are going to tend to favor, um, these are going to tend to favor being the cathode. So the one that has the higher potential is going to want to be the cathode. Now you'll notice down at the, the corners here, it's a little hard to see just because of the way the slide is organized, um, but I'm just going to point it out. So these ones are going to be strong oxidizing agents because these are the ones that are going to want to be reduced. So if reduction is most favorable, they're the ones that are going to want to be, um, they're the ones that are going to want to oxidize something else and be reduced themselves. Now if we go in the other direction, um, and we go up in the negative direction, these ones, uh, the f these ones tend to have an increase in the favorability of oxidation, and these tend to be the anode in a cell. So, and these are gonna be the strong reducing agents. So if you look, like lithium, for example, we never find lithium as lithium metal. We always find lithium as lithium ion in nature. So the, I, the notion that lithium plus an electron goes to lithium solid is going to be very favorable doesn't make any sense. And that, of course, is why we see such a huge negative number here. Negative 3 volts is a, is a pretty massive potential. Um, and because it's negative, this means that this process is not going to want to go in the forward direction. So the way to think about this is that when the, the, the number is negative or is lower than the other one, it's going to want to tend to favor the reverse. So um, you can kind of think of this as tends to favor the reverse of how it's written. And then the opposite is true for um, the opposite is true for down here. We never see in nature F2 um, 
gas in nature. We always see F minus in nature. So the fact that F2 plus two electrons has a massive positive potential makes sense because we know that this one is the one that's more favorable, the 2F minus. So, so that's kind of how we're going to do this. Now, the most important thing is that the cell, so let me just put a little note here. The cell with the higher standard reduction potential will be the cathode. So if you were to hook two cells up, um, let's say, for example, we were to hook up, let's just pick lead and we were to pick uh, copper plus two electrons. So the lead two plus plus two electrons goes to lead solid has a minus 0.13 volt potential, standard reduction potential. And the copper plus two electrons goes to copper has a plus 0.34 standard reduction potential. So if we were to look at these two, the copper wants electrons more because it has a positive 0.34 than the lead, which has a negative 0.13. So if this one wants electrons more, it is going to, in the spontaneous direction, be the cathode because it wants to be reduced more. So whatever one has the higher standard reduction potential will be the cathode. Now let's just pick another example. Let's just say, for example, that we were to take silver and hook that up with copper two plus and hook that up with the copper copper two plus now even though copper has a positive cell potential that doesn't really make a difference because if you look at the two numbers the silver wants the electrons even more the silver being reduced is at plus 0.8 whereas the copper is at plus 0.34 so in in these two cells the silver and the copper, the silver will be the cathode because it has the higher standard reduction potential. So this gives you an introduction to standard reduction potentials. We're going to look at um, some lecture problem questions that use these now. So this one says, order the following oxidizing agents in terms of increasing strength. So we have Cl2, H2O2, and Fe3+. So we have to go back to the table and we have to get their standard reduction potentials. So if we go back to the table and we look those up, we have Cl2, which if we look at that here, that is uh, down here at uh, plus 1.36. So I'm just going to put a little dot there. So we have H2O2, which is right here at 1.78. And then we have um, iron 3 plus, which is at 0.77 and is right here. So let's write down those numbers um, and go back to our example. So we found our standard reduction potential for this at 1.36 volts. Uh, we found this one to be at 1.78 volts. And we found iron 3 plus to be at 0 0.77 volts. So it says, order the following oxidizing agents in order of increasing strength. So an oxidizing agent is something that's being reduced. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the one that has the highest reduction potential, right? That ones with the highest reduction potentials are going to be the best oxidizing agents. So we're going to order these as H2O2 is greater than Cl2, which is greater than Fe3+. Okay, so now if we look at B, we can uh, order the following reducing agents in order of increasing strength. So if we find these on the chart, we're going to find that H2 is at 0 volts, aluminum is at minus 1.66 volts, and copper is at 0 0.34 volts. You can go back and take a look and find those if you need to. So a reducing agent is being oxidized. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for the ones with the lowest standard reduction potentials first, meaning these are the ones that don't want to be reduced but want to be oxidized. So we're going to order these as aluminum, which has the lowest, is the strongest reducing agent relative to the H2, and then that is going to be relative to the copper. Okay, and then it says select the stronger oxidizing agent. So if you go and look these up on the table, this guy is going to be at 0 0.96 volts, and the silver is at 0 0.80 volts. So again, if we have an oxidizing agent, we're looking for the thing that's being reduced. And so the NO3 in this case is going to have the highest reduction potential of those two, so we select the NO3 minus. So that's how you can use standard cell potentials 
to um, to make predictions about strength in, in terms of oxidizing agents and reducing agents. We're going to look at how this affects the overall cell potential when we connect to electrodes in just a second.